I am back to highlight British ingenuity and far thinking and beauty in their new submarines. Apparently the Dreadnought class submarine. The video title is UK is building the new submarine that is totally different than any other subs on earth. And why is that? We are about to find out. And real quick, I had to just do a tiny bit of background so we know it's more legit. I've never heard of it, but it does indeed seem to be very real. It's happening. Dreadnought class submarines will show up in 2030 or the 2030s. They are building two plan for four and the royal navy is definitely stepping it up a notch they have always had an incredible navy it really seems like i don't know maybe i'm just more into the british military as of the past 10 years but it seems like the past 10 or 20 eh, 10 or 15 years they've really uh, decided to start investing even more into it with two very new aircraft carriers hms queen elizabeth being one of them and one that i have done a video on it is absolutely incredible and i really can't wait to see what this is all about their new submarine i mean i don't know of any other submarines that are being built right now probably other countries as well this thing is going to be something else here we go this is all the information we have on it right here learn about it together here we go The new Royal Navy Dreadnought class submarine, which is currently under construction, has innovative features that promise to take stealth to a whole new level. Hmm. The Dreadnought is a massive undertaking for UK industry, and there is no doubt that it will be a huge win for the UK over the next few decades. Oh yeah. Hands down. The Dreadnought submarine will be the most stealthy and largest ever built for Royal Navy. HMS Dreadnought and HMS Valiant, the first two ships, are already under construction. The Dreadnought is destined to take over Britain's nuclear deterrent in the 2030s. These new classes will be larger in order to include a number of new stealth features. Hmm. It's huge. Like its battleship namesake, the new submarines will feature cutting-edge naval propulsion design, incredible firepower, and several features that will set it apart even from other modern submarines. I'm not sure if this is the exact class, it's probably all, you know, classified right now. Maybe it is, but regardless, it's incredible for me to see the size, the true size of submarines, because you just see them in the ocean and people standing on top of them, but you don't really grasp, at least myself, how large they actually are. These things are huge. And with that thought, there's no way that I could be on deployment in one of these things for weeks or months on end. Ugh, I, I could not do that. I know some of my friends said they could. I, I, I would not, I would not be happy. Throw me on a ship instead. <laughs> They will be armed with Trident D-5 missiles, which is enough firepower to potentially destroy any major city and most of the surrounding area in a 7-mile radius. This is yeah. a fearsome amount of firepower per submarine, especially when you then multiply that by up to four Dreadnought-class subs, which could be on patrol at any time. In other words, one Dreadnought submarine could potentially destroy most of continental China, a lethal weapon of mass destruction. interesting use of place but uh yeah pretty uh, pretty aggressive so far these large submarines will have four 533 millimeters torpedo tubes for spearfish medium range heavyweight torpedoes the spearfish can hit targets up to 65 kilometers away these torpedoes were specifically designed to intercept high-speed deep diving enemy submarines with titanium hulls such as the alpha and sierra classes The Dreadnought class is being constructed at a special time in history. For the first time, three major allied countries are designing and building their next generation of nuclear ballistic missile submarines at the same time. The United States has the Columbia class, the United right. Kingdom has the Dreadnought class, and France has the SNLE-3G. Yeah, it's fantastic for all of us allies. It's a beautiful thing to see. 
This fortuitous event is allowing the United States, the United Kingdom, and France to actively share mutually beneficial components, thereby improving future naval relations and efficiencies. The dreadnought is mid-sized of the three submarines, measuring 153.6 meters long and 12.8 meters wide, with 12 Trident missiles and a crew of 130. Compare that to the larger Columbia-class sub, which is 171 meters long, 13 meters wide, and equipped with 16 Trident missiles and a crew of 155. The French SNLE-3G is the smallest of the three, measuring 148 meters long and 12.5 meters wide, and carrying 16 Trident missiles and a crew of 100 people. It's incredible how many people is used for really any military equipment, it seems like. It's so many. And I think someone said for HMS Queen Elizabeth and the uh, just the aircraft carriers that the British have, and I'm not sure if it's true, but they said that they require, compared to their counterparts, a lot less personnel to actually run them. But once again, I would not like being stuck with, say, on the U.S. submarine, 155 personnel, I believe it was. Nope. Nope. How do you even fit that many people in these things? They are huge, but goodness. The Dreadnought was primarily designed by BAE Systems, in collaboration with Rolls-Royce and the SDA, as part of the Dreadnought Alliance. The submarine is being built at the BAE Barrow and Furnace Shipyard in northwest England, with nuclear propulsion systems being built by Rolls-Royce Submarine Division in Derby. That's so cool. Sorry, I'm stopping a lot, but Rolls-Royce, I, I had no idea that they were in the Navy game whatsoever, the ship game. I guess anything with engines, they're on cars, ships, planes, jets, everything. If it has an engine, that can, next up is space. Maybe they are in space. I don't know. Wild. But uh, right on, Rolls-Royce. Once again, British ingenuity everywhere. It's a thing of art. The Dreadnought class will use an X-form rudder system for greater control, a quieter turboelectric drive, and a pump jet propulsor for improved power with a lower acoustic signature, similar to the US Columbia class and the French SNLE-3G. The new PWR3 pressurized water reactor, based on a US design but using UK reactor technology, powers the Dreadnought. Its simpler design necessitates fewer coolant pumps, making it much quieter. Mm. Dreadnought, unlike the other two submarines, has a relatively elongated and streamlined sail in the front third of the sub, as well as bow planes, rather than sail planes. These bow planes will most likely be retractable for high-speed maneuvering or when surfaced. The Dreadnought is used whale-inspired design, to achieve better performance. Love it. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Dreadnought class submarines will be their distinct take on the double hull design. Modern submarines in the United States, including the new Columbia class, have a single hull design and a distinctive cylindrical shape with a rounded front. And it looks like a blue whale. Other submarines, such as those built by Russia and China, have two hulls. However, unlike the Russian double hull design, the outer hull of the Dreadnought is much lighter and not designed for strength. In addition, unlike other double hulled submarines, the reinforcing frames will be located on the inside of the inner hull, as they are in the single hulled Columbia. The Dreadnought class submarine appears to primarily use its double hull for a new reason, namely stealth. The UK Ministry of Defence stated that the next three boats would also be given names with historical significance. The names of the ships will be HMS Dreadnought, HMS Valiant, HMS Warspite, and HMS King George IV. As of 2018, the Ministry of Defence anticipates that the first submarine will enter service in the early 2030s, with the Columbia class scheduled to enter service in 2031, and the French SNLE-3G around 2035. 
Dreadnought, like the most stealthy existing submarines, will include mechanisms to protect against electromagnetic detection and tracking. To improve visual stealth when near the surface, the outer surface will be a different color than in previous versions. Interesting. For many years, and in some other leading navies still today, the main focus for making submarines stealthy was to make the propulsion quieter. In this regard, Royal Navy ships are already considered very quiet. The Dreadnought, on the other hand, will feature a new turboelectric drive. The main defense of a submarine is its stealth. Speed, depth, and countermeasures can all help a submarine escape, but the best way to survive is to not be seen in the first place. As a result, it is unsurprising that submarines being built today will be more stealthy than those already in service. I hope so. There we go. This is what I need to see if I were to ever be on a submarine. Modern gym facilities, a classroom and study area. That's pretty nice. And a doctor that works from a designated sick bay. Stepping up their game. I mean, hey, you need that uh, crew healthy and happy. A submarine of the future. A submarine of luxury. I mean, Rolls-Royce has their hands in it, so it has to be, has to be fancy. Well... All I could say is the British submarines are going to be deadly and extremely stealthy, it seems like. You know, that's their best friend as a submarine. If you're incredibly stealthy and you're never found, you don't need defensive measures. Simple as that. That is, it looks so good too. So nice. Love to see it though. Love to see it. And I'm sure there'll be a lot more information coming out in the next, I mean, decade. Since it's coming out in pretty much a decade from now that it will actually be out and running and prowling in the seas, keeping the British and its allies safe. I love it. Any more information that you could give, as always, please let me know. This is uh, incredible. I would love to see where the British rank in Navy or Naval power today. They've always been a powerhouse, definitely a powerhouse, but where do they rank today? Look, everything is kind of skewed, but they're they have to be up there. And look at it. They have to be up there. <laughs> Whenever my family would go as a kid to Hawaii, there is a submarine naval base there. And a lot of training and everything goes around Hawaii. So you would often see submarines just floating around Hawaii and doing training, coming back from missions. And I'd be thrilled in the future if I were to ever see, say, the Dreadnought. But they're so, so fun to see. I don't know why. But until that time, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time for more of these. Have a good rest of your day.